YouTube friends. It's Joyce from Morris Patch of Heaven Homestead. And today I'm in the kitchen doing a fermenting um, segment for um, Anna over at Fermented Homestead. She has a collaboration going on. And um, today I'm going to be fermenting Pico de Gallo. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with um, fermenting, it is something that's been taking place for thousands of years. It's a wonderful way to preserve your food um, with simply just adding salt. Um, salt is a wonderful preservative and it is a healthy preservative. It's not like um, when you go to the grocery store and you buy you know, sandwich meat and you've got all these preservatives. When we do ferments, it is simply adding salt. So anyway, I'm going to be doing a simple lacto-fermented pico de gallo. Our family absolutely loves pico de gallo, and I like to kick it up a notch by fermenting it a day or two. Um, what pico de gallo is, it is um, a kind of like a relish or a salsa, uh, but it's fresh. So it's made with fresh ingredients. Um, I will be adding tomatoes, cilantro, onions, garlic, jalapenos, and lime juice and of course our salt. So um, you can add this to eggs, salads, burritos, and our kids love to just eat it with organic taco chips. It is over the top, it's so good for them. So we make it quite often. This is like a staple in our home, especially when tomatoes and cilantro and onions are coming on in the garden, we will have this almost daily. Anyway, um, it's just a, an, a a good way to get some extra good bacteria into your gut when you ferment. Um, as you can tell, I have some um, sourdough starter, which is another ferment, and I have apple cider vinegar, which I'm fermenting. We are big fermenters. I have been fermenting for many years. Um, growing up in a family where we ate lots and lots of sauerkraut, it was just like a given. That was something that we just always had with sauerkraut. So my kids even love to get in the kitchen and start stomping away um, and making sauerkraut. But anyway, um, <clears throat> our gut is actually our second brain and um, prevention is key. So if we have a healthy gut, we will not have disease. It just is that simple. Um, the lacto portion of the term refers to specific species of bacteria, namely lactobacillus, which it has the ability to convert the sugar into lactic acid. So um, lactobacillus strain is so named because it was first studied in milk ferments. You always hear about that when you're thinking of milk. Um, these bacteria were readily, um, let me see here. Sorry, I had to write this all down because I knew if I tried to memorize it, <laughs> I would leave some of it out. Okay, so um, it gets rid of lactose and other sugars and converts them quickly and easily to lactic acid, So, which is simply amazing. So it's taking the sugars out, and um, but lacto-fermentation does not necessarily need to involve dairy products. So, you know, there's no dairy in any of this. But um, lactic acid is a natural preser preservative um, that inhibits the growth of harmful bacteria. It also increases um, and preserves the vitamin and enzymes. It's simply amazing, guys. You would not believe how good fermenting is for you. Um, so it makes it that it's digestible. Um, it makes the fermented food digestible, which which contributes to good health. Sorry that I'm looking down. I just wanted to read that so that for those of you that are new to fermenting, you would understand this whole process because it is simply amazing. I know a lot of you are canners um, and that's a great way to preserve food. But in so doing, when you are canning and you're canning it at such high temperatures, you're killing a lot of the good stuff. When you ferment, um, it's another way of preserving food and you can put that in cold storage you are actually saving all of the nutrients. It is simply mind blowing, but it is so simple. Um, so anyway, making fermented food can save you not only money, it can help give your gut ecosystem a diverse variety of different strands of good bacteria. 
um, to help rebuild and support a healthy and strong immune system, which is so key in this day and age. Having a healthy immune system starts right here in the gut. You know, isn't that crazy to think that this is our second brain? This is telling us what's going on here and all throughout our body. So keeping it healthy is key. But anyway, fermenting has been around, like I was telling you, for thousands of years, and it's slowly creeping into its way back into the homesteading kitchens. You are hearing lots and lots more about fermenting. You know, quite a few years ago, it was something that you just didn't hear. We did it, but you didn't hear much about it. Um, so, um, and, and in the homesteading communities and natural living communities is where you are hearing a lot about it. So, fermented pico de gallo, like I said, is as simple as, I already chopped up the tomatoes. I'm gonna add this all together in the bowl. Then I'm going to stick it in my jar and we're gonna go from there. Okay, so I already went ahead and chopped a lot of this because I want to save you having to watch me chop everything. We use the Roma tomatoes because they do not get mushy like other tomatoes would. And you know what? A mushy tomato in pico de gallo is not real yummy. I mean, it can be done, do with what you got, but if you can use the Roma tomatoes, just because they stay hard a little bit better. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is this is four to six, I used five um, Roma tomatoes. And now I'm going to put in some of our pickled uh, jalapenos. Uh, this was probably two or three. I already have them in jars. I keep them in the refrigerator. Again, it's a ferment. Um, so we like it spicy. If you do not like it spicy, you can add a bell pepper um, and just dice it up. And then one medium or red onion. This was a pretty good one because we love onions. So I'm going to put in one large onion. And our family just absolutely loves onions and garlic. And they're so good for you. And if you can get your kids to eat this, it's a win. Okay, so then this was two to three cloves. I used four. Again, like I said, we love onions and garlic, and I love to get that garlic into them because garlic is a natural antibiotic. And so if anything's going on in your body, it's gonna go to work and it's gonna start fixing it all up. Okay, so then I need a lime. If it happens to be a seed in there, it'll be okay. They'll chew it up. You know what, the seeds in organic uh, fruits and vegetables are good for you. Of course, in moderation. But the lime did not, does not have really too many seeds. I didn't see any come out. And if I did, don't tell them. It won't hurt them, they'll eat it. Okay, so just one lime. lime limes are big with uh, Spanish uh, cuisine. They use limes on just about everything. It's so good for you. So high in vitamin C. Okay, it says a handful of cilantro, but like I've been telling you all, cilantro pulls heavy metals, pulls toxins. This is an entire bunch. I'm going to add the whole bunch. That's a couple handfuls, right? <laughs> That's kind of how we roll around here. I don't usually go by a recipe. I just wing it and make it my own. It turns out just fine. Um, okay, so now it says two teaspoons of Himalayan salt. Okay. So we're just gonna put that right over the top and I'm going to mix this up and what it's going to start doing, it's so beautiful. It looks like Christmas in a bowl. Look at that, guys. If you have never made pico de gallo, I highly recommend it. You will love it. Even if you don't ferment it, you can make it fresh. It usually does not last. If I have this going and they smell it, they come and eat it immediately. So to get it in the jar to ferment is not an easy thing. So by me doing this, 
it is already creating lovely juices. They are marrying together beautifully. So I'm gonna add it to the jar, push it down. I'm going to add a fermenting weight. These little weights you can get on Amazon. They're just little glass weights. If you do not have one of these, I have heard of people going outside and getting a nice rock, scrubbing it really good, sticking it in a dishwasher, and using that as their weight just to keep what you want is you want to keep uh, the liquid or the the vegetables below the liquid so that there's no chance of um, bacteria that gets up there and starts mold because you do not want that and i have to tell you in all the years that i have been fermenting and making sourdough bread and kombucha Maybe one time in all the years of making kombucha did I get one scoby that had a little bit of, it looked like it could have been mold. I don't know what it was, but I didn't want to mess with it and got rid of it. So um, never had an issue. You can also take a, um, a cabbage leaf and use that and just form the top of the lid to keep everything submerged under. Okay, now in storage, <laughs> I have all of my stuff. I even have my funnel. I do not have any of that. These are not even mine. They are a dear friends who brought over some fermented stuff for me. Um, and so I am using hers. And then this is a fermenting lid that you can burp. So this is what we will be putting on, on the top underneath our weight. And so what we will be doing is whenever you do a ferment, make sure you put a, um, a paper towel or something underneath it because it will start to ooze. And so what we will do on a daily basis is just kind of let the air out. Okay, so we'll be setting this on our counter only for two days. This does not require very long. Um, and if your house is really warm, it can be done in one day. So during the summer, I do not have to ferment this longer than one day because our house will stay pretty warm. I'm not sure about this one, but it kind of feels like this one would be warm as well. So the warmer the home, only one day would be needed, but you need to taste it and see if it's got the tang that you like. If not, you can let it run another day. So, um, of course, the tangy taste is best. So anyway, and then you can store it in your fridge or cold storage for a long period of time. They say three to four months. I dare to differ. We can let it go much longer. But with pico de gallo like this, it will start to break down. The tomatoes will kind of get a little mushy, but it's still delicious. And you can add this to different Mexican dishes. I have been known to throw that into chili and it is amazing. So anyway, let's stick this in here. We'll see how graceful we can be. I have wonderful canning funnels that saves me from spilling everywhere, but I do not have them here, so. I have a wide mouth jar here, which I absolutely love because it makes putting the spoon in there or whatever, very simple. Look at that guys, isn't that beautiful? Oh, it's so amazing. And it smells delicious. That's cilantro, I don't know. I know there's a lot of people that say they just do not like cilantro. I absolutely love it. Um, what did I do with my wooden spoon? So what we're going to do is we're going to start shoving this down there. Shoving it down. So what we want is we want the liquid to come above it. And here's a bit of advice. If you end up doing this and you don't have a lot of liquid, you can make a liquid um, with just some water and salt. But since we already added the salt, see that liquid that came out of the tomatoes? Look at that. Um, you can just add, top it off with a little bit more water. You can make yourself see, see that. Look at that. The more I shove that down, the more liquid is gonna come to the top. But some um, ferments, especially if you're making like sauerkraut and you use an older cabbage, you'll find that you do not create as much liquid, so then you can add to it. So I'm gonna stick more in here, and if I do not end up getting 
enough liquid, I'm going to add just a bit of water. Surprisingly not making too much of a mess. Okay, so there we go. We're shoving this down. And as you can tell, there is not a whole lot of liquid, although there is, you can see it, but I'm gonna add a little bit to it. Okay, the more I push it, the more liquid is coming to the top, and I could sit here and just keep working it, um, which I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit. There's a little bit left, and I know my kiddos are gonna devour that. So that's one of the reasons I made a little bit extra, but look at that, do you see? There is liquid. I'm gonna add just a little bit more and keep pushing it down. Guys, I have to tell you, if you have never made this, it's gonna become a favorite, I guarantee you. Okay, look at that. Looks like I may not have to add liquid at all. I thought I might have to, but I think it has created plenty of its own. Okay. So, let me wipe this up. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna put the weight on. Here's the weight. And I'm going to just put that there and I'm gonna shove it down to look at, do you see all the liquid that came to the top? Look at that. Do you see that? Is that just crazy? The salt makes that liquid just pull out of those vegetables. Is that not beautiful? So, so yummy. Okay. So I shove that down and I have the liquid coming up above it. And I'm gonna take my little fermenting lid, put that right on the top. And it's different with regular canning where you can only do finger tight. This doesn't matter because we're gonna be burping it. But look at that. That is so amazing. It is so delicious, so simple. You saw how easy that was to make. I mean, it was nothing more than um, three, no, I used five Roma tomatoes and they were a good size, you saw that. Um, an entire bunch of cilantro, a whole onion, four, no, five cloves of garlic, and a lime. That was it. And salt. Two teaspoons of salt, and you have fresh salsa. And so after sitting on my counter for a day or two, I'm going to leave it probably for a day, taste it tomorrow because we have the heat going, and see what we think. Otherwise, I'll let it go one more day, and we will be enjoying that with chips. Oh my goodness. It is so absolutely delicious. Um, so if you comment on um, each and every one of these fermenting videos, it's going to be the whole month of February. It's called Fermenting February with Anna over at the Fermented Homestead. Um, you will see a whole collaboration list from now, from uh, February 1st until the 28th. And um, if you comment on those, she is actually giving away two kits of uh, the mason tops, and they will come with the tops, the weights, the the, um, the stomper for making sauerkraut, and it has a cookbook. It is so amazing. I have a kit. They are amazing. You definitely want one of those because it really does help make your ferments, you know, your fermenting a little bit easier. And to have this, I have years ago when all of these fun things were not available, I would just use, like you see here on my... Um, sourdough, I would just use muslin and just cover it up and just make sure I had a cabbage leaf that kept stuff submerged. Um, but now they've got all these fancy things that makes it just that much easier. And there are all kinds of other little weights that you can buy that help with fermenting as well. Okay, I will leave a link in the description below. Um, go check out all of these fermenting videos. You will learn so much and hopefully you'll give it a try. Your gut will thank you because I'm telling you what, this is the way to preserve your food. It's one of the simplest, easiest methods around. Something that they've been doing for a very long time and it's becoming very popular because of the health benefits. So I'm not just saying do this 
just because I'm telling you to do this or asking you <laughs> to do this or just, you know, recommending that you try it because your gut will be thankful. Your gut will thank you. It is so good for you. But anyway, guys, I hope that you will check out the rest of these um, February ferments and give it a try. Um, I'm just so thankful that Anna asked me to be part of this um, because it is a passion of mine and um, I do a lot of ferments and have for a long time. So anyway, um, if you've not subscribed, I ask that you please do so. We have a couple of other fermenting videos that you can go check out and give us a thumbs up and let us know that you're enjoying our videos. And until next time, guys, God bless you.